Hi everybody, it's the Soap Man. Uh, got our new soap today, it's Saturday. I'm back from sunny Florida, here to cold, rainy West Virginia. Uh, it was kind of hard to come back to that, but I knew vacation had to end, and it's time to do a soap video. And I kind of learned a lesson this morning. I did, almost a month ago, I did one that was called the Tiger Swirl Attempt. And although it turned out well, it was not my best looking soap, it was not my best performing in the shower either. But I gave it out today and people loved it. I was really disappointed. I was kind of, you know, telling them I didn't like it and everybody just loved it. So, you know what? Even if it doesn't turn out well, it's okay. Especially with me because I, this is not a business. This is a hobby. I give it away as part of a community church project. So, I'm not making money on this. And the people who received it just loved it. Now, what I'm going to do today is something different. Got my oils here. They're down to, my oil is down to 90. My lye is down to 100 because I want to soak pretty cool. What I'm going to do today is something I've actually seen a few of you do on YouTube. What I'm going to do, this is a mold. This is my Brimbleberry mold with a sectioning tool in it. But what I've done is I've, I'm going to pour one color here with confetti soap, the same soap over here, and if you can see this, the dividers are pulled apart like in a V-shape, and I'm going to pour a solid color in here. This is what it is. This is actually colors I had left over from last week, and they made a nice, um, I'm going to call it lavender color. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to call it lavender. It made a nice lavender color, so I'm going to pour that in the center. I'm also going to soak, I'm also going to uh, scent the center part, which you know I don't often do in cold process soap, but... Brambleberry's apple sage performs very well in cold process soap. I made one like two months ago that had this in it, and it's still, today, I just used another one today, still has the scent in it. It still smells great. It holds up great in cold process soap. So I'm going to do, I have just enough to do this center V part. So let's go ahead and get our, our soaps mixed up. Now, this is a soap that I had left over uh, with multicolors in it. And I just went ahead and chopped it up. I had intended to do this. And I also have these in these cups shaped up a little bit smaller. These are going to go on the sides of the V. And then once again, this lavender is going to go in the center of the V with the scent in it. This is not my idea. I've seen a few of you do it on YouTube. Uh, so it's not my idea. The one who inspired me to do it, because I watched her video and she did a nice job of it, is uh, her name is Tony, and she is from uh, White Soap, White Milk Soap and Candles. Look her up on YouTube, White Milk Soap and Candles. I don't know if it's hers or not. I don't know who give the credit to, but she's the one I saw who really gave me the idea to do this. So thank you. This is this is uh, inspired by you. Now my lye water is cloudy. If you've watched my videos, you know I always put a lot of tusks of silk into it. I also am getting back to somewhat of my basic recipe. If you've watched some of my older videos, I've done this for like two years, but I've only started posting like in May of this year. If you watch some of my older videos, my standard recipe is so simple, it's unbelievable. It's 50% olive oil, 50% coconut oil, because I really like the, the lather that I get from the coconut oil, and I do a heavy super fat to offset the dryness from it. Now this one is almost the same. Recently I've been doing a lot of different recipes, experimenting with different oils, different oils, and different butters and so forth. And I'm probably going to continue to do that, but I still kind of like my old recipe because I like the lather that I get from the high coconut. So this is... I'll post the recipe, but it's almost 50% olive oil, 50% coconut oil. I have just a little bit of castor oil added to it. Let's make some soap. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to get just a light emulsification, just get the light and the oil blended, like I always do. Look, let's get the gloves on. Have the goggles on, let's get the gloves on. Oh, and those are old gloves. All right, 
Those are old gloves that have titanium dioxide on them. Shoot. I always try to have everything set up and be well prepared, and I still sometimes mess up. Here we go. That's all I'm going to do right at the moment. They're barely emulsified, just barely emulsified. I will stick blend again. Actually, I can't because of the embeds I'm going to put in. Just a little bit more. And the thing about this is I want a thick tray, so it's all right if it thickens up some. I just don't want it so thick I can't pour it. as I can three ways. These already have part of the embeds in them. These two cups for the sides. I'm not even going to clean that out because I'm going to end up using that later for another project. But I do want this center pretty heavily colored. Okay. Mix that in just a little bit. Get that titanium dioxide mixed in. And I'm going to put the rest of the embeds into it. Yeah, that look, that's what I'm wanting. Medium trace. That looks nice. If you can't see that one, let's make sure you see this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that one's a little bit whiter, so I'm going to put some more white in this one. Yep, these look about equal. They look nice. Those are going to go on the sides of the V. This is the actual center of the V. This is the one I am going to go ahead and scent. And it's okay if it thickens up because I want it thick too. So I'll probably stick blend this one just a little bit more.
even with almost 50% olive oil. It's staying nice and fluid because I've let it cool down. And that's one thing, I've used this recipe so many times and I like it. When I want a thick recipe, I soak a little bit hotter and stick blend a lot. And when I want it cooler or when I want a thinner batter, I soak it somewhat cool and don't stick blend quite as much and I just love it. It works so well. All right, well now here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this. Making a bit of a mess, but that's all right. I was kind of expecting it. And I probably have more soap than I need, so I'm all right if I let some go over the side. I'll clean it up and use it for another batch or another project. The one with the seed is thickening up, which I'm not supposed to do, but you know, it, it, it happens. And that's one reason I don't generally like scent in cold process. Okay, I'm going to tap this down, get some air bubbles out of it, pull the tools out of it, smooth this out just a little bit. Let's get these dividers out of here. I'm not even going to try to clean them up. I'm just going to put them saponify and use it as soap for later. I can just go ahead and get a solid color on top. Since this is so thick and I still have head space in the mold. Oh gosh, I don't know. No, you know what? I'm not even gonna try it. I'm gonna ruin it if I do that. That's all that's gonna happen with this soap. So I'm gonna take Rusty muffin mold. Which is always on hand for leftover soaps. And we're going to just make some extra muffins with this.
And these will also make very nice soaps. Folks, there you have it. Now what I will do is spray all of these, as well as the main one, with rubbing alcohol to keep soda ash from happening. I'm going to go ahead and cover these and let them gel. And I'll post this tomorrow. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the cutting. I hope it turns out well. I hope I've done the creator justice. And we'll see you tomorrow, but the real true test will come in the shower. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye.